first uh, layer of the soil. Organic matter on the soil is the only thing that can help them to keep the nutrients. Even if they, if they are using chemical fertilizers, they need the organic matter to avoid uh, that all chemicals that they are using, all nutrients that they are using, uh, uh, will be washed uh, uh, by the water. Chemical fertilizer is a soluble fertilizer, can be removed by water. And in some context, uh, you can lose something like 40% of the whole chemical fertilizer uh, if you don't have organic matter there to keep, to avoid, uh, to, 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 to keep these uh, 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 nutrients and avoid the leaching by water. Also related with soil conservation, is the whole discussion about animals and the importance of controlling con control uh, their access to, to the field. Animals are quite important for smallholder farmers. Uh, in, in many cases, w uh, uh, animals work also like insurance. When they, farmers are uh, uh, facing a difficult situation, they sell animals, uh, it's quite common in Africa that people say anim uh, 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 sold animals or sell animals, sorry, uh, uh, to, to pay for education, to pay for health care, and in any difficult situation that they are facing, they can use uh, animals as a strategy to, to cope with it. Um, <coughs> animals are quite also quite important on the the whole, uh, on the whole process of sustainability and integration of uh, production systems or subsystems inside a system like manure and other things. But the problem is that uh, in, in our context, uh, in several places or in many places or almost all places that we work, animals are eating almost everything. And <coughs> people need to produce and they are using very the soils that they have, the small pieces of soil that they have, in a very intensive way, and harvesting the production and everything that uh, uh, every organic all oh, organic materials that they are able to produce, at the end the animals are eating. And the problem is that no one is really feeding the soil, and we are all only removing things from the soil, and we are not feeding the soil. And to be able to design and, and implement some complex systems, sustainable systems, uh, <coughs> like multi-cropping systems, introduction of trees, and many other examples of techniques that we uh, uh, discussed before, Farmers need to be able to control the presence of animals. Uh, they need to be able to allow the animals to enter when they want, and control or don't allow the presence when they don't want. And because of that, it's important to, to think about the introduction of uh, well, fences and many other techniques that you can introduce to control the presence of animal, animals and uh, uh, allow, to allow you to design a system without uh, the, the interfer inter interference of them. Another issue or not, uh, uh, an, another pillar in our uh, uh, climate resilient, sustainable agriculture uh, ideas uh, is related with sustainable water management. Water is essential, of course, uh, there is no agriculture without water, there, there is no what a life without water. Uh, in many places we are facing problems related with, related with uh, severe uh, drought. Uh, we can count with it and we can count that the problems of drought, it is going to be more common and more serious and we need to be prepared for it. Uh, we need to be prepared to catch and to keep all water that rains, all drops of water that rains, we need to be able to, 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 to collect it and, and to facilitate the penetration of it, the infiltration of it on soil, 
And then the whole discussion about water catchment systems, uh, 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 rainwater harvesting, uh, at the community level, but also at farm level, is quite uh, 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 central in the whole discussion of sustainable agriculture or climate resilient sustainable agriculture. There are several initiatives, uh, several alternatives that farmers have been using, like small dams, uh, brick tanks, rock systems, and, and other types of reservoirs. We are talking about small reservoirs. We are not talking about huge dams. In the in the uh, in our semi-arid, uh, uh, in many places that actually need work with. Uh, to talk about uh, huge dams, uh, uh, huge dams is not one alternative. The evapotranspiration, the amount of water that a huge dam is going to lose, is really uh, 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 <coughs> uh, huge. Also, it's, uh, 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 and uh, if you concentrate the water, then you you have problems of distribution of it. And usually, farmers that has more money and more power, they have access to the water that you concentrate, and the other ones are going to be left without water. And then we are talking about small, small scale. We are talking about small dams, small tanks, and also on farm. Uh, there are several systems that you can build on your own farm to be able to collect the water, uh, to keep the water. And uh, well, uh, irrigation is key. Um, every farmer that has condition to do irrigation should be prepared to do it because we will need it in a context of climate change. We will need to, to be able to irrigate, uh, to, to produce, because we never know uh, with this er erratic behavior of the climate, we never know when it's going to rain again. Agrobiodiversity preservation is, is also key. Uh, farmers have been working with seeds and with uh, uh, animal races and, uh, well, plants for centuries. And they, are, they have been designing plants and animals that are adapted to their conditions. And Part of their knowledge is there inside that plants and they are in, in, uh, on that animals, and it needs to be protected. It needs be, be, to be protected because it is related with their history, it is related with their culture, their uh, food habits, and all of things. But it needs to be protected also because on this kind of materials, uh, uh, or this kind of materials hold a, a secret. It is important to preserve it also because these materials hold some secrets that uh, we, don't, we don't know yet. Uh, these materials can help us to adapt to the challenges that climate change is posing to us. They are really normally more resistant uh, and more uh, 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 adapt to, to, to the local condition. And it's important also that farmers have it and control it and have access to it. The best way to preserve these materials is by using it. Uh, the best way to preserve is by use. Some of these materials, uh, farmers, well, they continue to use because they like the taste or because it is related with something on, on their culture or because it fits better to their uh, local condition. And some of these materials, uh, uh, the tendency is, uh, uh, well, they are going to be extinct if they, they don't continue to use. Uh, because of that, it's quite important on this moment uh, to start uh, initiatives that can guarantee that we are going to collect this material and to keep it alive. And then the organization of uh, Seed banks at the community level, well, it starts at farm level, the organization of something that allow farmers to preserve their own materials in, their, in better condition, but also community seed banks and, 
and regional gene banks that can collect seeds from several communities and keep it there, preserve it, is quite important. We don't know what kind of challenges we are going to face in the future. On, and these seeds, they can help us to deal with these challenges. But we are not talking about seeds, we are talking about animal races, we are talking about plants uh, like uh, banana, cassava, and many other uh, 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 varieties of plants that the farmers are working with. Uh, <clears throat> it's also important to think about the combination of scientific knowledge and local knowledge and to start a process of participatory breeding at local uh, uh, level of plants and animals. There are many uh, techniques uh, that we can use and some of them farmers use already. Some can be brought by the science to increase the adaptation and uh, to increase the productivity of the our traditional materials, the materials that farmers are using. It's also possible to think about the multiplication community, at community level, the multiplication of seeds at community level, the, communi the, 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 the multiplication of seeds to allow farmers to have access to a good quality seeds in the moment that they want and, and, with, and, the, and the, with the quantity that they want. Access to seeds can be a challenge in some places. Seeds usually are, are expensive. If they have ways to produce their own seeds at communi community level, distribute it there. Uh, is, uh, uh, they can benefit uh, uh, from, from it because they are going to spend less money to buy seeds and also these seeds can be quite, uh, 